<laughs> revenge, revenge is sweet. I'm Kristen, also known as Woolenbein, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And it's been quite some time, my friends. It feels like forever. I think it's only been two weeks, but I took another break. Uh, I had jury duty, so I had to make sure I had all my ducks in a row, made sure that, you know, my work was done, shop update happened. Luckily, it was just one day and they let me go right away uh, after lunch, so I don't have to make another appearance there for, who knows, eight years? Go figure. But anyway, needless to say, I got lots of knitting done. They did let me bring knitting into jury duty, which was, I know that's not the case everywhere, but luckily here in New York City, they, they do allow knitting in uh, when you have to attend jury duty. So um, yeah, that was a plus. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about what I, I knit on uh, while I was there. Uh, and then the following week, Thanksgiving happened. So <laughs> you can imagine just a whole lot of stuff going on. Unfortunately, the podcast had to take a back seat that week. Uh, but anyway, I hope those of you that did celebrate Thanksgiving here in the US uh, had a really wonderful, happy Thanksgiving, ate lots of food, got to spend time with family, friends, or just enjoyed a really nice, peaceful uh, weekend, long weekend off um, and got lots of making time in, whatever, whatever your situation. Um, yeah, I'll talk more about that in the blather segment where I chat about life stuff at the end of the episode if you care to stick around. Uh, but yeah, I'm back this week. I'm very, very happy to be back podcasting. I have a lot to share with you because just just because I haven't been podcasting does not mean I haven't been making anything. I've been making all the things. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Vlogmas. Vlogmas is happening. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what Vlogmas is, uh, that is kind of like a... Um, it's a fun challenge for either YouTube creators or anyone who wants to start a YouTube channel or put out videos or what have you. It's great for people who are looking to either start a YouTube channel or, you know, just, or just a fun challenge. Um, so there are several months where there, these challenges happen. There's Vlogtober, there's uh, Vita vi vlog every day in April, and then there's there's Vlogmas. So vlog every day, publish a video every day leading up to December 25th, uh, which is Christmas. So, but again, it doesn't have to be religious based. It can just be holiday based, non-denominational based, what have you. Uh, I am taking a very laid back approach to Vlogmas. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm vlogging whenever I can. Uh, and so far I'm on a roll. So, you know, just giving you guys little snippets of my day leading up to the 25th. So, um, yeah, so far, you know, uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of work to put out a video every day, but you know, I get up early every morning, put out, you know, compile all my footage and put all the music together. And it's just, it's really fun. I really do enjoy video editing. Um, so I, you know, it, it, it makes me remember how much I really did enjoy it when I was doing it full-time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to be a full-time video editor, uh, but now I'm a full-time yarn dyer and I get to have my cake and eat it too, so to speak. So um, I get to dye yarn, I get to knit, I get to design, I get to, you know, edit these videos every every week for you. So, um, you know, I, I feel very, very happy and lucky that I get to do that. But anyway, Vlogmas, having a lot of fun with it. If um, I will pop a link in the doobly-doo up here uh, to the playlist. So if you do wanna pop in and see some behind the scenes stuff that happens at Volumbine headquarters or my life in general, uh, you know, it's definitely a fun little um, series that I have going on and a lot of other, um, YouTubers and people in the fiber community are doing it as well. So I'll pop some links to some of my favorite vlogmases that are currently happening uh, in the description box below, along with some other uh, important links that I'll, links to things that I mentioned throughout the podcast. Uh, but yeah, so I'm back, I'm back. I'm trying to think what else I wanna talk about. I do have a giveaway winner to announce, uh, so let's get on that as well, shall we? Um, so the Stoker Knit Along, which is a pattern that I designed, I believe I published it around October, I'm, I'm totally blanking right now, but I did host a knit along uh, around the pattern release, so uh, I created a thread in the Volenvine Ravelry group and 
You guys, I really, really enjoyed seeing all of your stokers pouring into that thread and it, again, I love, like, I, the best part about designing a pattern is seeing all the wonderful variations that uh, knitters come up with using different yarns, colorways, you name it. Uh, it was just such a fun uh, knit along. So thank you so much to everybody who, number one, purchased the pattern uh, and knit the pattern and, you know, the wonderful feedback that you've been giving me. Uh, it, it means the world. So... Uh, yes, I've locked the thread last night. I gave you guys a little extension because holidays. Um, but I chose a winner using random number, what was it, what is it, random.org. Um, so the winner of this uh, knit along is uh, number 75, Just Ducky, who is Jen. So yay, congrats, Jen. And it was actually funny because she, the, the deadline was nearing and she contacted me saying that she was playing a little bit of yarn chicken. So we worked something out and I you know, sent her another skein and she completed on time. So Jen, I salute you, congrats. So the prize is I will dye a colorway of your choosing on one of my bases. So uh, please get in touch with me via email. I'll pop it in the link, the doobly-doo below here. Uh, let me know what colorway you would like and we'll talk about bases or what have you. And thank you so much to everyone else who participated in the knit along. Uh, and I am gonna be hosting another knit along uh, because I did release a new pattern that I'm gonna talk about in the FO section. So. Without further ado, let's have a word, a quick word from my lovely and amazing sponsor, Skillshare, and then we'll talk FOs. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing in the fiber arts. I love learning new things when it comes to knitting, sewing, photography, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout, and enjoy. And thanks, Skillshare. And welcome back. All right, finished objects. Uh, I finished this a while ago and have since published the pattern, but my cow and my cowl is finished, you guys. It is done, it is published, it is out in the universe, and thank you, thank you so much to everybody who's purchased a copy so far. Um, there is actually a coupon code out there leading up to Friday. By the time this is published, hopefully early in the morning, you'll still have time to jump in onto the discount. Here's the coupon code down below, uh, and you know, snag snag a, a copy, and now it's stuck on my necklace. But anyway, Cal and my Cal is done. Uh, this is a pattern of my own design, uh, and the yarn is Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi. Um, she's the dyer behind this beautiful colorway. Uh, it is her hearth colorway, dyed upon two bases. Um, I picked up these skeins at the New England Fiber Festival this past November. So two skeins, one on her fig lace base, which is a, a lace mohair silk blend, and then her, uh, what is it, Marie Cutie base, which is a Polworth, Superwash Polworth, uh, nylon blend, I want to say. But the pattern is knit holding those two strands together, and here is what it looks like. And this has been getting so much wear these past few weeks since uh, I finished it. And it does call for beads. However, you can omit the beads, uh, or, you know, I do have a tutorial out there showing you how I knit with beads, uh, so, you know, hopefully you will find that helpful. But otherwise, it's just a very simple, relaxing, intuitive knit. Um, and yeah, I will try it on so you can see. But yeah, um, yeah, and it takes up just one, it's like a one skein wonder type of pattern. You know, you can substitute it with DK weight and what have you. Uh, just, you know, be wary of the gauge because uh, it does take up pretty much most of a single skein of each. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like. It's very, very snuggly, very warm, very cozy. Um, and you can wear it many, many different ways. So, you know, sometimes if your shoulders get a little chilly, you can wear it like this. Yeah, so. Anyway, I like it. I've been wearing it a lot. Uh, I, I believe Gabby is actually going to be creating kits uh, for the Cal and My Cowl uh, this Friday. So by the time you're watching this, she, I believe, is having an update at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So definitely hop on that. I am going to be having a shop update uh, 5 p.m. I will also be having kits for my sparkling cider hat, which can also be used to knit the, the Cal and My Cowl as well. So, you know, if you, if you want both or one or the other, what have you, um, you know, the world's your oyster. So anyway, um, very, very excited that this is out in the universe and it's published and, um, a super, super big thanks to all my wonderful test knitters. Um, 
and my tech editor, Faye. Uh, you guys are amazing and I don't know what I would do without you. So yeah, uh, another another pattern. Um, and yeah, definitely, I definitely have the, the designer bug happening. Um, my goal is to publish one more pattern before the end of the year. I, I don't think it's gonna happen. Probably by January. January is more feasible, I think. Um, yeah, so anyway. Cal and my cowl. I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say about it other than I knit it on a US size 6 4 millimeter needle. Great for, you know, the last minute holiday knits. I knit this up in about, you know, less than a week. It's totally doable. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my FO for this week. The last time I spoke with you, I had cast on the Felix Pullover, a pattern by Amy Christopher's, as part of my contribution to the hashtag blame Dunder Knit Knit Along. Uh, Dunder Knit uh, is also known as Caroline. She has the Knitting Vicariously podcast, which I love, and every year she hosts the Blame Dunder Knit Along, uh, where, you know, if there's a project that you want to cast on, you know, be it for whatever reason, a reckless cast on, something that you've been longing to cast on, or just a simple treat to yourself, you can just blame blame Caroline. Um, you know, just say it was her fault. She made you do it, and, you know, she she's she's totally willing to be thrown under the bus for that. So uh, to that, I salute you, Caroline. So <laughs> I cast on a Felix pullover, uh, especially because she cast one on herself. She let me know about this pattern. I was like, I want that in my life. So I'm all done with Body Island. As you can see, you can't really see, but I will stand up so you can see better. But yeah, Body Island is complete. Now I just have to pick up the stitches for the arms and we are good to go. But this is probably the highlight of the pattern itself. The pattern is very, very simple, very straightforward. It's just a simple top-down raglan, but this little eyelet detail along the raglan shaping makes just... it's so simple, but it just gives the, the sweater so much personality. Um, and the yarn, I actually... I did a tubular bind on, a tubular bind on, <laughs> a tubular cast on, which, you know, it, I'm actually, it's kind of like the Kitchener stitch, you know, it, it seems like a very complicated technique, but once you do it a couple of times, it becomes second nature. So now if you asked me to cast on, do a tubular cast on one by one rib, I could probably do it off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, a really, really handy, you know, it's, it's a little bit of extra work, but the results are so worth it, I think. Um, it just gives it that extra little pizzazz in um, in detailing. Um, the bind off at the bottom, I, I just, I bound off regularly in patterns, so um, I didn't, I didn't back too much around with that. But um, yeah, the yarn. The yarn is some yarn that I picked up at Webb's when uh, Tanya and I drove up to the New England Fiber Festival. Made a pit stop at Webb's because when you're in Massachusetts, that's just what you do. Um, so I picked up a whole SQ of sweater quantity um, of this really beautiful yarn. Yeah, the yarn is uh, Sublime Willow, and I've actually never heard of them before, but uh, it's this really beautiful kind of tweedy chain, I want to say chain plied uh, or netted, I don't know what it is, it, it, I believe it's chain plied um, yarn, but it's absolutely beautiful, really soft and squishy. It has, let me see, 94% merino wool uh, and 6% nylon. And I don't know if you can see, but they're just really, it's, there's so much depth to this colorway. First of all, it's mauve. I mean, it's like a peachy mauve, I wanna say. Flesh, flesh colored mauve. Uh, but then if you look really super close, there are just like these really, like rainbow, rainbow flecks of tweed in there. Um, even some little pops of hot pink, which, you know, you didn't hear it from me. I'm, I'm kind of digging the pops of hot pink. I love it. It's, 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 it's awesome. So, yeah. And I have my, my little progress keeper here from Charmed and Dangerous. It's a little sushi sashimi, uh, <laughs> progress keeper. I love this guy so much, especially because I love sushi and I love octopus. I'm a savage, but anyway, uh, that is where I am, and yeah, again, the pattern is the Felix Pullover by Amy Christopher's, really relaxing, very simple, I love it, uh, yeah, so lots of progress on that, and I'm trying to think what else, ah, yeah, living in my Tanny Casey project bag, this thing is amazing, I love it, it's so big, and, uh, it just holds so much, and so well designed, um, and I actually have a, um, a button on here 
which I don't listen to at all. It just says, you better swatch. I don't know why I purchased it. I just like the glitter and it's something that I never listen to when I read it. Um, I, cause I don't swatch, I don't know, whatever. But living in there is my, is a, another hashtag blamed under knit, um, Cal cast on because you know, I, I, I was craving this like nobody's business. I just needed something simple, something, I think it was just having one of those days where nothing was going right. And I was just like, I just need a win. I need a win. So <laughs> I cast on a slumber shawl by Stephen West. Um, and I'm also blaming, uh, Karen and I don't know if you guys watch the, uh, Do You Knit podcast, the Yarn Pimp podcast with, uh, Karen who owns Do You Knit, a yarn, one of my favorite yarn shops in New Jersey, uh, and Alana and Kimberly who work there. They, they do uh, weekly video, like live, they actually do live video podcasts. Unfortunately, I'm usually working when they're podcasting live, so I never get to jump in on the chat, but at the end of the day, I usually catch up with them, and they're just, they're so fun to watch, guys. Alana had just finished knitting her slumber shawl, and funny story, because last year I was watching their podcast, and Alana had finished knitting uh, the Brioque Pullover by Stephen West, and I had gone there for a, <laughs> a class with Stephen West, and I saw Alana's Brioque in person, and I was like, okay, I have to knit one of those. So I bought a whole sweater quantity's worth of yarn to create the Brioque, cast it on, totally lost steam, and it's just been sitting in a project bag since then, and um, unfortunately, but I realized, I think, that I, it's a sweater, while it's a really fun knit and a sweater that is looks a, like a lot of fun, it's something that I know I'm, I'm probably not going to wear on a regular basis. I don't even know if I'm gonna wear this on a regular basis, but I purloined the yarn from that project to knit the Brioque. It was a fade, it was a great fade, and I just, you know, I saw her slumber shawl on the podcast, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna rip out the Brioque and cast on a slumber shawl instead, and I love it, guys so much fun. It's so quick, so mindless, and so much fun, and the colors just make me so happy. Totally out of my comfort zone. I mean, we've got some green going on here, and some orange coral pops, and then it's just going to go into, um, the edge is just going to go into this dark kind of black, variegated black with coral pops in there. So the yarn that I'm using is a combination of wall collection and stitched together studio yarn. Again, I purchased this at Do You Knit uh, for my birthday last year. It's been a year. can't believe it. Um, but yeah, this colorway is called Grunge Pop, I believe. Uh, and then this one down here is Art Nouveau. Uh, and this one, Orange Panda. I, I'm blanking on colorways, but this one is called, oh, this is Panda Oranda by Stitch Together Studio. So that's gonna be my last colorway. Um, yeah, but uh, again, totally blanking on this colorway. I'll pop, I'll pop a link uh, to the project page so you can see what I'm using for it. But yeah, just, this kept me sane during jury duty. My gosh, you guys, I, like jury duty, it's fine. Like now, again, like uh, New York City allows you to bring knitting and some like needlepoint and what have you. Um, they do have Wi-Fi, they have snacks, you know, they, they set it up so you're comfortable, which is really nice. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I got a lot of knitting done on this and I had my audiobook, so it, it was it was a good day of just solid knitting, but it got to a point where I was like, if I have to sit here another hour longer, <laughs> Oh goodness. So yeah, um, I'm glad, I'm glad that I had this to keep me company. Uh, so yeah, that is my slumber shawl by Stephen West. Yeah. So the other project that I have to share with you this week is living in my home row fiber co bag, which is easily one of my favorite bags ever. I love her shawl. She's, she's the best. I love her Instagram feed too. It's just, she's awesome. Um, yeah, so living in here is my advent cowl, and um, I cast this on at the beginning of the week uh, using my minis from Once Upon a Corgi. I subscribed to her Advent of Wool and Minis because it is based on A Court of Thorns and Roses, my favorite book series of all time. It's, I know that I have, I have favorite, I have other favorite books, but this is easily my all-time favorite. I know you guys have your Harry Potter. I have my Court of Thorns and Roses. Sorry, not sorry. Um, so yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, when she announced that she was going to have an advent calendar based on A Court of Thorns and Roses, I'm like, shut up, take my money, sign me up. Um, and you guys, 
she delivered. Oh my goodness. Um, so when we went up to the New England Fiber Fest, I know I, I keep, it's a drinking game at this point. Anytime I men mention the New England Fiber Fest, just take a shot of whatever you got around because I'm going to mention it. Um, yeah. So when we went up, when Tanya and I went up there, she also signed up for the club. Um, for the, for the advent calendar and uh, so when we went there we met up with Gabby and she gave us our advent calendars early and the gluttonous yarnies that we are as soon as we got as soon as Tanya and I got back to our hotel we tore into it we opened up every <laughs> we opened up all of the advent minis um, yeah so yeah we, we, we just couldn't wait uh, but we put we stuffed all the minis back into their appropriate um, envelopes, and now we get to experience uh, the advent calendar all over again, and it's just as fun, if not more. It's just everything, everything. Gabby, I'll shut up now. You outdid yourself. So I decided I was thinking about doing like a little advent garland type thing with either miniature socks or stars or Christmas balls. I don't know. Um, but that's a lot of work and knowing myself anytime I cast on something modular like a cozy memories blanket a granny stripe blanket it does not pan out so um, I went pattern stash diving and remember that Helen Stewart of Curious Handmaid came out with a land of sweets pattern I'll pop it in the sidebar so you know what I'm talking about uh, last year and it's brilliant because it calls for it's it was designed with advent Mini, mini skeins in mind. So you take your advent minis and you knit them into this beautiful cowl and here's where I am with it. So we are, um, today's day five. So I've knit four days into this cowl and I love the way these colorways are, are turning out. So, um, day one was, uh, from Gabby's advent calendar. So day one, we have wolf pelt. Second day we have gold mask. Second, uh, third day is Stay with the High Lord, um, and yesterday's was Pool of Starlight. And I'm still, I can't remember what day five is, so I still have to open that one up. Uh, but yeah, check out, check out Vlogmas to find out what that one was. But, um, yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying it. Um, and again, just Helen's patterns are always just a simple, intuitive, relaxing knit. So I'm just having fun working on these while I catch up with Vlogmas episodes on YouTube. And yeah, it's just so much fun. Uh, the only thing I will say about this pattern is that it only uses a Gabby, the skeins that came with the advent calendar are about 10 grams and each, um, each stripe for the cowl only requires five grams. So it's very versatile. I'm sure I could, you know, make each stripe longer or short, you know, however long I want it to be. Um, but I am left over with about five grams. So maybe next year, um, maybe next year I will endeavor to make a full on garland or who knows, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I'm glad I have a little bit left over because you know, when I can't wear the cowl, I can, I can make something else with it. Anyway, I'm thinking out loud as I usually do. So yes, that are, those are the projects that I've been working on. Um, I do have a few, there's a siren guys. I don't hear this stuff anymore. It's just, <laughs> all right, that's a lot of rambling. I'm going to move along to sewing because I do have some sewing to share with you. Um, and I'm currently wearing a finished object. And I will stand up so you can see. This is the Hannah dress by By Hand London. And yeah, it's just a very simple, versatile wrap dress uh, with some gathers and set in sleeves. And it ties at the side here. And then you can't see it, but there's a tie that goes on in the inside. It has some uh, darts right here, some bust darts. And then in the back, some darts. Um, and then I used a snap closure here because I don't want and I don't want to give anyone a show obviously uh I did run into a couple of issues I ideally this pattern is very simple to construct but I did run into a couple of issues with the pattern uh either some instructions weren't that clear or you know just yeah I found some of the instructions a little sparse so to say so to speak um and then also especially like with the gathers I'll stand up um but like under here, I'm not gonna give you guys a show, but under here, you don't gather the skirt because if you do that, it's gonna create bulk on the outside. So she doesn't have you um, gather the, the fabric underneath the, the wrapped portion. So, you know, 
they were very, it, the instructions were very vague as to where to stop gathering on the skirt. So I had to pull that out. And then also there are pockets in here, which is brilliant. Um, but the pattern did not tell you where to align the pockets. So they, all, all it says is like, stop gathering like X amount of inches from one end, uh, blah, blah, blah. So um, I did that, but then I didn't take into account that, you know, the alignment of the pocket. So when it was all said and done and I attached everything, first problem was that the pockets were in really, really wonky positions. And then the second thing was that the pockets were really low down. So like with my hands just straight at my sides, only my fingertips were going into the pockets. So that was a little weird. Um, because generally, uh, in, in my experience, when I sew inseam pockets, so pockets at the side of an, a garment, they're usually about like three inches from the waistline. This was six inches from the waistline. So that was a little wonky in my opinion. So I had to rip the whole, I had to separate the bodice from the skirt again. Um, I cut off about three inches from the waistline, which was fine because honestly, like the skirt is just a rectangle that you're gathering at the top. So that was really easy. I just cut off three inches um, and reattached everything, re aligned. This time I aligned the pockets with the side seams and it worked out. So um, the only glitch is concealed by the, by, the, uh, by the tie at the side, but I just had to gather a lot more at this portion compared to the rest of it because I don't know. I don't know if anyone else who made this pattern experienced that. I tried looking up certain sewing blogs, um, so I couldn't find any, any information about that other than it's a great pattern, it's easy, and blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, and that's why I actually fired up my sewing blog again, The Peculiar Stitch. Um, I'll pop a link to it down below um, because I do find like sewing blogs are so helpful for this, especially if you're a newbie sewist. Um, just being able to see how other people constructed a pattern that you're trying to construct, um, especially, you know, if you know you have to make any alterations. Um, I should have made a small bust adjustment with this pattern, uh, which is probably why I had to add a snap, but at the same time, it's just very relaxed, very comfortable. Um, but yeah, I do find if you are sewing, I think it's incredibly helpful to start a blog and just share your notes so other people can, you know, find, you know, find, um, you know, just tips and tricks to help them in their, in their sewing journey, so to speak, as well. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, and another site that I do find really, really helpful for fitting uh, tips is, um, I'm, I don't remember, I think it's just pattern review, sewingpatternreview.com. I'll, again, I'll pop it in the down bar here, but it's, it's a, it, it, the site itself needs an update, but it's kind of like the Ravelry of for sewing patterns, I wanna say. Um, but yeah, you can review patterns, um, mention any alterations that you made to a pattern and post photos. Um, and, but I, I do think that the site could use an update as far as, you know, graphics and, you know, just the way navigation and, and the like, but it is really, really helpful. So I've been trying to dip in there and contribute to that as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, so that is that this is my Hannah dress again. It's a pattern by by hand London again pattern is It's very very simple to construct, but I it, I do think it assumes that you have um, Some prior sewing knowledge of the basics and what have you so um, You know just to kind of troubleshoot some areas uh, if need be so uh, but yeah I'll, Again links links to all this stuff below uh, the fabric is a hundred percent linen I purchased this from Joanne fabric believe it or not. It's a little bit on the pricey end I think I paid, what was it, $15 per yard or something, 20 something, but so worth it. Um, it's just so soft, so it has a really nice drape to it. Um, and yeah, I'm just really pleased with how this turned out. Um, it's been getting a lot of wear. I wore this on Monday, so it is definitely time for it to head into the wash, I think. <laughs> so um, yeah, that that's my hand address. So again, my sewing mojo has been kind of in the dumps lately. Uh, I don't know what it is, I just haven't, like, Aside from this pattern, no other patterns have really been jumping out at me. But I do want to sew something for Dennis and, you know, like a coat or something warm. I don't know what drove me to want to do this, but I came across this pattern uh, by McCall's. Uh, and again, like the samples on here are, in my opinion, just horrendous, but you can get really creative. And if you use your imagination, um, I am actually going to be making him version D, I believe. So I'm gonna be making him version D, I believe, D or this one. I, I haven't decided, but 
Um, yeah, basically it's just uh, a flannel, like you can use, uh, you can use anything like flannel, uh, corduroy, um, you know, just some outdoor fabric. Uh, so I did pick up some of this flannel, which is lovely. It's nice and soft and fluffy. I ran it through the wash already. Um, I got it from fabric.com. Uh, so I got that and then, and then my friends, if you've been watching Vlogmas, you know how obsessed I am lately with Sherpa. Sherpa or Sherpa? I think it's Sherpa fabric. So it's that fluffy, fluffy, um, I'll just show you because the pattern says you can use Sherpa. So I'm gonna use that flannel and then I'm gonna line it with some Sherpa. Yeah, so it's this stuff. It's so fluffy and soft. Um, I think he's really gonna like that, uh, but we shall see. I don't know. I, fi I figure it's something he can just chuck on if he has to do some yard work in the winter or just wants to get cozy or has to run an errand. It might be a nice little jacket to pop on. I don't know. Plus, I just want to make it, I think. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I think this and this are going to go really nice together. Um, that might be my weekend plan, uh, what I make over the weekend. Uh, what else did I want to say about this? Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I showed him the fabric. He knows what it's going to look like. So he get, he gives it the thumbs up uh, and the like. So I, And I know I've been teasing making the Rumana coat by another pattern by By Hand London, but unfortunately that pattern is only available in PDF. And I printed out the PDF. However, it's like 80 to 90 pages of 8.5 by 11 a5 paper and I'm just like, what is it, A5 or A9? I don't know, whatever, but it, you know, printer paper. A ton of sheets that I'm just like not mentally prepared to tape together. So I'm gonna have to find a copy shop in my neighborhood to print that out or hopefully, I mean, Dennis is an architect. I mean, maybe he has a copy printer there that he can print this, the copy shop version out for me. I don't know, I might have to do some bribing. But anyway, yeah, I, I was just not, prepared. I, I started doing it. And I'm like, what am I doing? What is my life? No, I can't do this. So, <laughs> um, that is, that is on the back burner for now. Um, but what are you going to do? So that's where I am with sewing. Uh, so and I believe that is all I have to share with you this week, guys. Um, I am going to move along to the blather segment where I chat about life stuff, if you care to stick around. Uh, but just a quick heads up about my shop update. I am having an update tomorrow at, uh, what is it? December 6th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you can make it. Um, I did send out the newsletter already this week, but in the future, if you'd like to be looped in about uh, shop update news, like what to expect in each update, always, you can always sign up to my newsletter to get um, all that info. Just go to my website, click on the newsletter, enter your newsletter link, enter your info, and every week you'll get an email in your inbox letting you know what to expect in each update. So. Um, yes. Uh, all right. So life stuff. Uh, Thanksgiving happened. I think I chatted about that a little bit. Uh, jury duty. Uh, don't have to do that for eight years. Um, if you've been following Vlogmas, you know that we lost power and heat for a couple of days. Um, it was just partial power. So motorcycle man never fails not an episode without motorcycle man is it <laughs> so don't worry i got him on the vlog so you'll see him you'll see him on there um <laughs> revenge revenge is sweet uh but anyway uh so what was i talking about yeah so vlogmas is happening uh, i'm having a lot of fun with that uh and this weekend I'm getting together with some friends. We're gonna go fabric shopping, so you'll have that to look forward to. I'm not giving away any details yet, but it should be a good time. Um, and then Dennis and I are going away on vacation. We're going away on vacation. Uh, we are actually getting away for Christmas. So I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you guys where I'm going yet, but I'm very, I, I'm very excited. Dennis deserves it. He's been studying like crazy for his exams and after, finally, after a couple years, he's finally passed it. So yeah, we, we need, we need a break, the two of us, I think. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll have that to share with you. Um, and hopefully that'll be like, you know, Vlogmas surprise. I don't know, whatever. I, we'll play it by ear. As far as what I've been watching, Dennis and I actually have been, we started watching this one show on Netflix called The Last Czar. Um, and it's basically uh, a docu documentary slash drama based up upon the Romanov family. Uh, if you're not familiar, they, they were um, kind of like the last reigning monarch, monarch of Russia. Uh, and they had like five kids. Anastasia is 
said to have, you know, survived, you know, the whole family unfortunately was like massacred um, during the revolution. And uh, it said that like one of their daughters survived and one woman claimed that she was the daughter. Anyway, um, really fascinating. Uh, we started watching it. We thought it was kind of like, you know, a, a series, like a regular, you know, drama series type thing, kind of like The Crown, but uh, it's actually, you know, it's kind of like that, but then it's also a documentary. So they have like experts and historians come in and like tell you what's happening. So um, I, I think there are like four or five episodes and it's really, really well done. Um, uh, you know, very, the costumes and you know, the acting and everything are just wonderful. I definitely recommend it. Um, it's also, it also talks about Rasputin, uh, if you're not familiar as a very, very interesting character, um, person in history. Uh, you know, he's, he's actually a piece of work. <laughs> but, you know, I would, I would definitely, definitely check it out if you're into that type of thing. Uh, the last episode I will say was surprisingly, I found it very, um, I don't know, like it, it kind of upsetting because there's a scene, you know, the whole family was, you know, assassinated. There are no spoilers because it actually happened. Um, but yeah, the whole family was taken prisoner and then they were assassinated and they showed like the whole scene. And I actually had nightmares that night about it. And it's just, yeah, very, very graphic, you know, just, you know, so, you know, you get a heads up about that. But um, otherwise, a really, really interesting series to check out. Um, I've been re-listening to a court, uh, a, Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Maas. Uh, it's a it's a longer series than A Court of Thorns and Roses, but I think there are like nine books in it. But it's her first series that she ever came out with, and it's just so well done. A Court of Thorns and Roses is still my favorite, but this one is just really good. Um, so you know, definitely check that out. I've been having a lot of fun revisiting it, and of course, you know, the second time around, I'm picking up on all these details that I missed the first listen around. Um, and yeah, so I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, other than, you know, coming down from Thanksgiving high, uh, you know, we're getting away for Christmas. We don't really have too much else going on. Um, a friend of ours is going to be back in town the following week, so we, we, we definitely have a lot going on. My calendar's pretty much lit up like a Christmas tree at this point, so if I don't have a Christmas tree, that's my Christmas tree because there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, and I clearly did not go all out decorating this year. Um, I just, I unfortunately did not have time. Um, but you know, hopefully, hopefully Vlogmas makes up for that. Uh, and next year I, I definitely want to do some lights. I didn't put up a tree this year. I put out my tree or I got the box out. I just haven't set it up yet, but I, yeah, it's just, it's a lot. So anyway, what you going to do? But, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the holidays. I, whatever you have planned, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, I hope you guys are, you know, staying warm and toasty, getting lots of knitting done, um, and, you know, finding some time, some making time for yourself uh, and the like. Uh, I know some places it's warm, so please guys send over that warm weather to us because we could really use it here. It's getting quite cold. Um, but yeah, we did, if you've been following Vlogmas, we did lose power um, a couple days ago. I think that's where I left off before Motorcycle Man so shamelessly interrupted me. Um, yeah, uh, so half, like, in our, in our house, we lost power in our bathrooms up here, and then the laundry room downstairs, and then the furnace, and then, yeah, so we had no power for about a day and a half. Um, Con Ed came by, fixed it, but then the electrician had to come by and fix the heater because the transmitter, the, it's been a a crapshoot for the most part this week, but I'm, I'm managing, I'm managing, um, recording a podcast and I'm going to go down and edit. I'm going to dye yarn. Today's going to be, today's going to be productive. So anyway, I will leave it there guys. Uh, this is, I'm afraid going to be a, quite a long episode. Uh, but anyway, thank you as always for hanging out with me today. Uh, if you enjoy this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe. I post a video, uh, usually every Friday, if life doesn't happen, <laughs> usually every Friday for your viewing pleasure. Uh, and that's it. Happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I will see you next time.